So in this video, we're going to break down the match EQ in Ozone 9 and why we would use it and then how we can use it. So first off, why use match EQ? Well, quite simply, if we've got a really good mix, a fantastic track, and we want to have consistency of that across a, a whole album, we can use the match EQ to make sure the sort of average profile of all the tracks sounds the same. Now, another way we can use this is to take our reference track, a track we know already sounds really good and has a really nice EQ profile, and then apply it to our track or use it as a reference for our mix. Now, what I've done here is I've used a reference track and I've applied it to the final mix that I would have coming out of Logic. Now, I can't play the reference track to you as it would violate various copyright laws, but it is Pendulum Plastic World that I've used here as a reference. And it's of a similar genre as to what I'm creating. And it's also a track that sounds superbly mixed to me every time I hear it. So once I've captured the EQ profile of Plastic World, this is the view that I get here and how it applies to my track. And we can see that we've got some pretty simple adjustments going on. So if we just disable it, I'm gonna take the amount down to zero here, and then I'll introduce it. We can see the differences and then I'll show you how to do this. So hopefully you could hear the difference there as I push that up. It brings a lot of the high end up, but it also takes away my bass almost entirely. So it's not without introducing its own problems. So let's have a look how we set it up and how we can tackle that now. So to set this up, we're going to load up Ozone and I would just have it blank. We don't want any pre-processing happening because we need to capture this profile clean. So make sure this is the first thing or only thing you've got inside this particular instance. I'm going to hit on the little plus like we do usually, and then we're going to introduce the match EQ module. That's quite a simple exercise at the bottom here, we've got one reference and two apply to. So we need our reference track. So what we're going to do is bring in your reference track into your DAW. So I have a snippet of the Plastic World track here. If you can get the WAV files, so the CD quality files, that is going to benefit you rather than using MP3. So these are taken off of the CD. What we're going to want to do here, we want to solo just that track so it's playing back. Like I explained to you, I can't play it, but what we're going to do is press capture and then we're going to capture that track. I'll just have to cut the audio there. So we don't need to let a huge amount play over. We just need it until the EQ stops really adjusting. And once we've captured it, this is the EQ profile of this particular track. What we then need to do next is mute this one. And this time we're just going to play our mix directly into it. And we're going to, and we're going to capture our mix. I would do this at an important part of the track, probably a busy section. And that's what I've done here. And that'll be enough there. And as we can see, it's not vastly different to the other mix apart from in the low end. And a big factor of that is my track's written in a very different key. So it's sub frequency is quite a bit further down, but we can see the kick drum and everything uh, are in a very similar space. There is a fair bit more in the upper mids here and then the high end has got a similar curve to it as well. So addressing the issue of the low end first, we've got these two handles here on the left and right hand side. And if we drag these in, it will take away the effect. So in this instance, I I definitely don't want to balance the low frequencies below 100 hertz because it's in a different key. It's trying to remove that singular frequency down there. We definitely want to retain that in my track because that is where the sub lies. And that is why we were losing the sub before when we matched the two. Now, the two other controls we've got here, we've got smoothing and we've got amount. Now, smoothing balances out or makes a lot sharper the EQ profile. If I was to bring it right down, it literally matches it spike for spike. Now, again, if we're working on tracks in the same key or with exactly the same instruments, this might work, but it's very unlikely. It's more likely we're going to want to smooth it out and get a rough sort of estimate of the profile. And somewhere between 40 and 50% is usually a good space. Next, we're going to apply the amount. And this is quite simply how closely it's going to balance it. Now notice because I brought this handle forward here, that it isn't adjusting the low frequency. If I bring it back, it will take away my sub almost entirely. We're going to bring that back up to the 100 hertz. We know that to be right. So 
here it's lifting up the high end a lot. It's still keeping the dip around 10K and everything around here is relatively minimal. Although again, these are going to be key areas. We might not want to apply this as much. And then we'd probably bring the smoothing a little bit up to say the 65 region here. So now it's lifted up the high end a lot more and should be much closer of a match. So what we'll do, we'll just A and B this now. I'll have it turned off and then we'll have it turned on. We can quite clearly hear what it's doing there. It's lifting up the high end a lot, but it's not skewing the balance too much. What has happened though, it has started to now clip my trap. And we've only boosted here by sort of a maximum of like two and a half dB. Um, but we can see we actually got 2.4 clipping on one side. So we absolutely need to make adjustments for that. That could be simply as reducing everything else down or adjusting our mix as needed. Equally, now that we know this and some of these key areas might need a bit of a Lift, we can go back into our track and individually adjust those. As a quick balance, this could be really useful. We could dial the amount back and just have a bit more of a subtle adjustment and just play back and forth to see what works. This can be really useful as a mix reference tool and certainly in getting all of the projects to sound like they're all from one cohesive group, especially when they're recorded and mixed in separate sessions. And we can choose the best sounding one and kind of use the EQ profile for that to apply it across a whole project. So I hope that video was helpful for you. I look forward to seeing you on the next one.